Hey folks, Jason here with the Anchor Room. We're going to be um, talking today about the installation of a 94 to 98 um, lower panel. This is actually the bottom piece of the bumper um, that's ac accented with a, uh, a, a channel um, on the bumper by default. We actually made this piece by request and um, turned out to be really nice. This installation video will serve purpose for both the, both the carbon fiber material that has the air release channels as shown as well as for the um, standard vinyl. Uh, we're actually going to show the entire installation video with the carbon fiber air release channels um, because between the two it's probably the more difficult installation. I'm going to talk briefly about the tools we're going to use for installing this piece. Um, this is probably one of our favorites. It's a felt tipped squeegee. Um, I guess obviously the reason it is such a popular favorite is because it is felt tipped and will ensure that we don't scratch the surface of the car as well as the material itself. Um, this uh, carbon fiber release, air release channel stuff will scratch just like any vinyl will. And we always tell people you really want to treat all this stuff like you would the finish on your car which obviously also will scratch. Um, in addition to uh, the felt tip squeegee we have a microfiber towel. Make sure it's a new clean one. Uh, once again to ensure that we don't scratch the surface of the material that we're installing. Um, we also sell installation kits um, as well as just the felt tip squeegee if that's what you're interested in. The item right here in front of us has some detail to it. I want to point out exactly obviously why the detail is there and how to uh, take advantage of it. Um, the curvature, real obvious, it goes around the curves of the car at the bottom. Um, this is really the, uh, the detail that I'm referring to. Um, if you look underneath the car you'll notice that the bottom part of the bumper is held to the car uh, by some supports. Um, to be exact, there is one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, they're approximately three and three quarter inches wide. Um, I just want to point out this piece real quick, that edge right there. If you look on the underside of your bumper, um, this edge is going to literally line up perfectly with the edge under there um, where your paint probably ends, uh, the bottom of the bumper, where these pieces um, actually get wrapped underneath the bumper to ensure that you know this piece stays on. It just gives it that little bit of extra support. So really these are what we call the relief channels, um, the, the five that I mentioned earlier, and this is where you will find the actual bumper supports. But in order to take advantage of it, first you want to line up the edge with the edge of the channel, and then you want to line up all of these edges with the underside of the bumper where the finish of the paint stops. We'll show you a little bit more detail here in a bit once we're underneath the car. All right, folks, here we are in the back bottom side of the car. As you can tell, the car is on some wheel ramps. I'm going to point out some of the uh, smaller features where we're going to align things, as I mentioned before. If you look underneath that bumper, first and foremost, you're going to see those supports. There's one. It's the leftmost one. There's a second one. And then a center one. And then there's a two at the other end on the far side. That's where those relief cuts are. Obviously, obviously the obvious point here is the left side of the channel. That's where we're going to line it up so that we have enough material to go into the channel. And then that piece that I spoke about earlier, which is this finished painted edge on the underside of the bumper. We're going to line that up all the way across to make sure there's just enough material to sit up here in the lip. As mentioned earlier, we're going to use these two tools, which is a felt tip squeegee and the uh, microfiber towel. Um, make sure that the entire bumper is cleaned off, uh, as well as the underside where the um, vinyl will wrap around. Uh, make sure it's clean and then obviously that it's dry. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Probably the most common question that I get from people is about the material itself. Especially the people that have worked with vinyl before, um, they're I guess kind of surprised that this is an application that does not require any water or application fluid. Um, it's because of the material. It's actually a dry um, release. It has air release channels, so in other words, any air that gets trapped underneath you will work out with a squeegee. Um, I also get a lot of questions: Is this a job I can do by myself? It really depends on how much patience you have and how skilled you think you are. Um, honestly, it's pretty simple. You just simply remove the material from the backing paper, as so. Please be careful when you do this, uh, not to tear it. And then once you have it all removed, literally just lay it 
on the area where you're going to be installing it and then we're going to adjust it multiple times to get it exactly where we're looking for. Alright, now I'm going to uh, continue removing the material from the backing and I wanted to capture this on video to show people that um, you know it's something again that it can be done with uh, one person that patience really is uh, the only virtue you need to have I guess in order to, to get this piece on there right and um, also obviously to show the whole uh, dry release piece that you know once you actually put this in place um, that it is not permanent and that it can still be moved um, so here's the entire piece hanging from my left hand I'm actually going to just move it towards the car and I'm just going to show you quickly what I'm talking about I'm literally just laying the piece on the surface and as you can tell it sticks by itself um, again obviously because the piece is tacky but you know since we haven't bared down on it it can still be removed as you can tell do so carefully um, you know we're trying to minimize any creases or scratches um, but all there's to it now is like I said earlier lining up the channel and the bottom piece and um, we'll have it in place in no time alright here we are piece is completely installed um, at least surface wise scan over here to show you there's no creases or bubbles as you can tell this top channel over here um, we're still going to uh, have to tuck that into the groove and that's the last thing we're going to be doing and then underneath we still have to tuck these release um, or excuse me extra channels around the bumper to make sure it gives it that extra support um, a heat gun is not a bad idea at this point really um, you can use it uh, whenever you're doing the entire installation but especially towards this area right here where we're going to be working around the corner um, using a heat gun to make sure this piece is fall in place it's uh, probably the way to go I'll uh, give you another update here in a second All right, I figured I'd give you guys a quick uh, show how the uh, channel is going to fill up with the extra carbon fiber vinyl to kind of give you an idea how it's going to work I'm going to take that uh, felt tip squeegee and literally just move it from the surface into the channel and as you can tell as soon as you press it in there stuff just lays down because it's tacky and then work you all the way all the way around the bumper to get it in there nice and uh, take your time areas that have some curves use the heat gun get that uh, material to conform to the curves and you'll be done in no time thanks for your purchase